Should we be concerned about Nico Iamaleava underneath the lights? Well, let's reset the poll question, if you don't mind, to that. I'm going to tell you why I'm not concerned at all. Nico has said previously he prefers playing on the road. And Nico also has a common attribute that Casey Clawson had. He was not born and raised in the South, so he sees some perspective in, in SEC football. If you're born and raised, you know, the Iron Bowl is a great example. Somebody gets shot after every single Iron Bowl, every single year. Okay, I love football, faith, family, football, but um, my goodness, I'm not going to shoot anybody. I don't expect to be shot after any game, no matter how it ends. So I think Nico has the perspective that Casey has and if he has success, it'll never work against him. Now, if something goes wrong, people could say, oh, he doesn't care enough because he's from California. No, I think he has perspective, and he cares plenty, Caleb, but I just think he's the typical, cool, calm California guy like Casey. Casey wanted to win as much as anybody, and so does Nico. But they're not going to jump off the Gay Street Bridge if things don't go their way one Saturday. Do you see? Do you see the point I'm I'm making there? Oh, I absolutely see the point. So the poll question is this: Should the Vols be concerned about Nico Iamaliava under the lights? Yes, it's his first SEC road game. No, he won't let it get to him. No, not being from SEC land helps. And wait, I got one more. No, Oklahoma's not really SEC anyway. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, all right, so you tell me, should should you be concerned whatsoever? It's a night game. It's a true road game, his first. Um, are you concerned that Nico could fold under the lights? No, I'm absolutely not concerned. And I asked this question just to say, is he ready for the lights? Because this is his first game away from home. And I'm not concerned about him at all. One, you're right, not being from SEC country helps. Two, Dave, this go. I'm gonna go to your. I want to go to your point about Polynesia players real quick, but it's um, when you talk about the stereotype of working hard and things like that. One of the things that comes with that is a lot of them. Again, when they play football, they just view it as every play they're just doing their job, right? They're just doing what they're supposed to do. Like the the magnitude, the moments, the moxie. It it doesn't get to them as much. It can be frustrating because then there's also you talk about this with Casey from California. You don't see the umph of like, come on, grab them by their throat and like pull them to victory. They, It's just, but you see the next play, just got to do my job. Just got to do, and that's all they focus on. It reminds me of, you guys ever watch Nikola Jokic in the NBA? And he's literally so dominant, but he's like, just got to do, just do my job. Just got to do my job. That's it. And okay. Well, I now for those that don't know, he's ready to get back home. I don't think he's that upset when they lose in the NBA finals. I think that's an extreme case. I, I think Nico would be very down and upset. I, w I wouldn't quite compare him because the things I've heard about him is just like, oh, oh no, we lost in semifinal. Well, Go you got to – I mean, he comes from a rough family back home, and he probably, you know <laughs> – I think he, that's why when the, the Morris Twins picked – long story short, Morris Twins picked a, fight, picked a fight with him. They don't realize that Eastern European gangs are way more dangerous than any gang in America. But, yeah, that, long story short on that. Uh, to the Nico point, though, I think a lot of – these play a lot of certain there are certain types of players who they they love playing the game but they view every play as just doing their job and they don't let any type of moment like josh hyper will say it's the biggest game because it's the next one and we're going to talk later no he's magnifying the oklahoma game i think niku imaliava dave is the type of player that's like it's the biggest game because it's the next one it's like i'm I just out too. here to do my job i do too and i don't think that and i uh thought i said this earlier maybe I, I skipped it uh it was said on the message board that he prefers yes be the faith outdoor said he prefers playing in road games so i don't know that casey ever said he preferred i think he just said they were the same but yes and it was funny josh hype will try to be diplomatic about that in his press conference said well there's nothing like playing uh, at home but you want a guy that says i want to play on the road here's the other thing too that we we haven't talked about because i don't know how much they'll use it they have the in helmet communication so they said everything's gone smooth there but uh, I, I want to go back to an argument that we made previously. And this was last year. And I made this argument 
uh, I guess, uh, headed into the uh, to, to, to the Georgia game. Um, and that was Tennessee's offense can get off to such a fast start that it can take the crowd out of it. So I guess that was in 2022, right? So, yeah. and obviously that didn't work out. But I do think there's something to that. And we're going to get to ball protection a little bit later. And that's the one way Oklahoma can win this game. As long as Tennessee doesn't come out and turn the ball over Caleb early, I expect that they could have a lead uh, because that's the way they like to come out and play. Your thoughts after we tell you we're represented by Banks and Jones. Well, it's because they're Tennessee's trial attorney. You can play to win with Banks and Jones because they'll go to trial. You've heard of other lawyers. They say they'll go to trial and fight for you. They won't. They just want to settle. That's the easiest way out. Well, that's not Banks and Jones, led by T. Scott Jones. They won't settle. They'll go to trial for you. Tennessee's trial attorney. They play to win. Truly, Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? Banks and Jones, T. Scott Jones, banksandjones.com. All right, Caleb Moore, your thoughts on Nico's cool, calm demeanor does not mean he's not an absolute fierce competitor. And I used to defend Casey Clawson left and right. And I hope to goodness that if Tennessee loses a game, whether it's this week, Alabama, Georgia, that people don't come back with a response. He just doesn't seem to care enough. Because that dude's put in about 60 hours of work to be better at football. About probably 46 weeks of the year. I'm sure he goes to class. <laughs> um, but Caleb, I mean, this guy wants it more than any of us want it for him. Yeah, and so, and here's the difference. You're leaving out one big part of Casey Clawson. If the vibe was not, yes, there was the unfair vibe that he didn't care but also he had a level of cockiness to him that I think brought people the wrong way too. He was a little cocky. And uh, I don't think Nico has that. Nico has moxie, but I don't know if he has cockiness. Does that make sense? And so I think it's not going to rub people the same way with as Casey. I mean, Casey Clawson and Kelly Washington were roommates and everybody felt that like they felt that they were head and shoulders above the rest of the team. And, and that I, I never felt like Casey came across as cocky to me. I guess I just, May, I guess I'm in the minority. Why did you think he was cocky? Well, there was the whole, like, when Tennessee lost to Georgia in 2002 when he was out and he comes out and he's like, if I was playing, we would have won by two touchdowns. I mean, remember that? But was he right? I don't know if he was right, honestly. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but... wait, 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 wait. Let's be fair. One of the reasons Tennessee came back and made that a game was Georgia wasn't prepared for James Banks in the fourth quarter. They didn't know. They had not prepared on how to stop him. That's and... true. So it's that that happens sometimes. So I'm not so sure he was right. And then the next year when he played Georgia, he lost 41 to 14 at home. So it, it looked really bad. Nico's not and never going to say that. If Nico misses a game, you know Dave Nico's going to like, oh, it's you know, it's we got to do what's best for the team, and you know, it's a team game, and you know, I just just hope to be out there with my guys next week. He's going to say all that type of stuff. He's never going to say if I was playing with my two touchdowns. He would never say that. That is a fantastic point. So you don't even think next year when he's more mature and leaders like Cooper Mays and Keenan Pilly are gone that he would ever make a, a statement like that because he's going to be asked those type of questions uh, more often, I would think, when he's the leader of this group. I mean, they're protecting him a little bit now. Yeah, okay, here's the way I see it. There's like a – Nico's going to do what he's coached to do to do, which is fine. I don't know if he's ever going to go beyond that, though. I don't know if you're ever going to see him on the sideline go at Jeff Saturday the way Peyton Manning did that one time. Mike W's like, Saturday, we are calling the F and play. <laughs> I don't think you're ever going to, I don't think you're ever going to see that from Nico. Um, I just don't think it's in his nature. Now you can question if that's a good thing for an NFL quarterback, because I think an NFL quarterback does need to have that moxie, but Nico is very much a do my job, I'm going to do what I'm told to do, and I'm really, really, really good at it, and I'm going to try to win the game, and that's pretty much it. Okay. While I'm telling you uh, about one of our great friends, and that's uh, Philip Lim at Asia Cafe, I want you to give me on the message board 
as far as simply the mental approach to the game, does Nico remind you of anybody? And Caleb, you think about that as well. Asia Cafe, treat yourself to authentic Asian cuisine handcrafted from guarded family recipes. Five locations to choose from, asiacafe.org, asiacafe.org. So I'm really interested in this. Uh, so message board, uh, help us out here. Uh, at Asia Cafe, they also have that Brazilian Cocoa Energy Booster Premix Instant White Coffee. AsiaCafe.org. It's been there since 1909, and they are fantastic. So you'll love Asia Cafe, and that coffee is unbelievable. I'm curious, what what quarterback from a mental approach does Nico remind you of? I'll give you one. Ready. And you're going to think I'm just being biased. Troy Aitman. He was not, he was not a, a bit, I'm not talking about the, I'm not talking at all about the physical play. Okay. Nico's more athletic. Nico probably just because, I mean, Troy Aitman had an incredible arm. So I'm not going to, I think they have similar arms. Nico can throw for more arm levels, which is more important nowadays, especially on the run. So any mobility goes to Nico, but they both were incredibly accurate had incredibly strong arms, and I, Troy Aikman was never the yell-at-you guy until Barry Drunken Switzer showed up and they had no team discipline. So that that's what Nico could become at one point, but probably he'll become that in the NFL, a get-in-your-face guy. There's a famous clip where Troy Aikman's saying, Nobody will coach this team, and somebody's bleeping got to do it. We we're not going to play the clip because it would be a copyright violation. I know that's before your time, so you give me an example. We get a couple more examples on the message board, and then we'll put it on the poll question. Uh, go, go right ahead, Caleb. Does he remind you of anybody from his cool, calm approach perspective? Yes. Uh, the one he reminds me of the most is actually Josh Dobbs. Um, I think okay. that's the type of quarterback – Josh Dobbs was the happy-go-lucky, all positive, just do our jobs type of guy, but he wasn't like. So the two quarterbacks that you and I both know of that grabbed players by their throats and carried them along and demanded that they step up were Peyton Manning and Hendon Hooker, right? Mm -hmm. And people don't know that about Hendon Hooker, but Hendon Hooker was very much very demanding, wasn't he? Yes, I think he was in your face. I don't think Nico's that. Somebody suggested it on the message board, Crystal, with all due respect. I, I don't think he's like Hendon and Peyton. I think they were grab you by the collar and you're in trouble. Yeah, I don't exactly. Think that. And one that's on the message board right now, Bryce Young. I think that's good. So we got that's Bryce Young. One. We got Bryce Young, Troy Aikman, Josh Dobbs. And then so I wanted what I want to do is our fourth option. Just I want other. Yeah, other comment below. So, but before we get away from the poll question that's currently up, can you give us an update on that? Yes. Uh, okay. So, should the Vols be concerned about Nico Imaliava under the lights? More than I thought. Forty-eight percent say yes. It's his first SEC road game. Um, twenty-seven percent say no. He won't let it get to him. Dave, nobody agrees with you. I'm sorry. Nobody agrees that not being from SEC land is going to help. Um, nobody. Nobody. Uh, but 25% Ooh, do agree, no, OU isn't really SEC anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 did you know that from John Hoover yesterday? He was like, I don't know. How crazy could this get?